In this video, we're going to continue our explanation of how factor analysis models actually can come up with estimates of the variance between observed variables in terms of the underlying unobserved factors, which we don't observe, as well as the error terms epsilon. So in the model, just to recap, which we had before, essentially what we had is we had three observed characteristics. We had how happy an individual was in our sample, their life expectancy, and the number of doctor visits, which that individual undertakes. It could be in, let's say, a year, for example. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to explain the variance and covariance of these variables by using only two unobserved factors, which another word for unobserved factors is a latent factor. So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to come up with how our model actually explains the variance of co and covariance between these observed variables in terms of these factors. And at the end of the last video, we had that the variance of y, the variance of our observed variables, is equal to the expectation of this right-hand side term here. So if we then multiply out this, we have that this is equal to the expectation of lambda, lambda times eta times eta primed times lambda primed plus lambda times eta times epsilon primed plus epsilon times eta primed times lambda primed plus finally epsilon times epsilon primed. So essentially what we have is we have that this is equal to lambda times the expected value of eta times eta primed times lambda primed plus lambda times the expected value of eta times epsilon primed plus the expectation of epsilon times eta primed times lambda primed plus finally the expectation of epsilon times epsilon primed. And then finally what we do is we use our other assumption of factor analysis models which is that the expected value of eta times epsilon primed is equal to zero. And then if we were to take the transpose of both of these sides, essentially this would also imply that the expected value of epsilon times eta primed is equal to zero. So we can use both of these assumptions in order to simplify our expression. So firstly, we can get rid of this term here, which is the expected value of eta times epsilon prime because we know that that's equal to zero. And we can also get rid of this term here because we know that the expectation of epsilon times eta prime is also equal to zero. So now we're left with something which is a bit simpler, which we're going to simplify further in the next video.